<laughs> so imagine this. You're male if you're a female, you're 32. Females, you're 30. So you're, you know, past the age that most of your friends are kind of getting married now. So you kind of want to get married and you finally found that one and you're ready to, you know, make the vows and it's a wedding day and there's a problem. You go to the justice of the peace and he won't marry you. Simply because you are one race and your partner is another. This happened on October 16, 2009. And the Justice of the Peace was Keith Bardwell. He was, uh, decided that he would not marry this couple because, simply because one was black and the other was white. Today, I'm going to explain why he was ignorant and uh, not allowing them to get married and that there are actual benefits to interracial marriage, dating, and uh, ha having children who are interracial. First off, there are personal benefits. The personal benefits uh, to interracial dating and marriage are mainly cultural, that you get to understand different cultures and that you uh, get to experience different things. Geneticists uh, Ari Thai Persad recently studied the psychological and biological effects of mixed race, mixing races. In an interview with several mixed race couples, she uh, found out that not only were they able to have food, or experience different foods in different cultures, but different linguistic, uh, or linguistic differences and cultural differences of their partners. This allows people to become more socially aware of different people and it allows them to um, promote tolerance of different races, religions, and all sorts of different things. Not only does it help personally when you're in a mixed relationship, but it helps your kids. Not, a, a little known fact is that genetically, mixing races is a good thing. There's a, a guy named Alan Ziff who wrote a book called Breeding Between the Lines. He explains the theory of hybrid vigor, which is what uh, farmers use to mix different crops. For example, they'll take a yellow corn and a white corn and uh, develop this super corn, I guess, that's <laughs> thick and it's juicier, sweeter, all these different sorts of things. It improves. Um, also, he did this with animals and they did seals. And for the seals, they arrived earlier in mating season, they last longer in mating season, they're more competitive, they're stronger, everything is improved by mixing the different species. Um, this also happens in humans, which is little known, because people, uh, because science hasn't really studied too far into it, just because it's a sensitive topic. But what was discovered was that different diseases like uh, sickle cell anemia, which is mostly found in African Americans, can be uh, lessened the chances of of getting with having mixed race kids because the um, cells from a healthy person who is not African American can uh, be spliced with the genes of an African American and thus a better child is born. Also, they did a study of the infant rate, infant mortality rate in Kenya, and what they decide, what they were able to decipher was that the mixed race kids had a better chance of fighting off the bacteria that uh, allows infant mortality in Kenya. Also, there are some myths about um, mixing races that need to be dispelled. When Keith Bradwell was asked, when Justice of the Peace Keith Bradwell was asked why he what, wouldn't marry these two, he said he was looking out for the kids. And as I just pointed out, the kids are perfectly fine if they're mixed race. They actually could be considered superior. Um, also, he said the divorce rate is higher for those who are mixed race, which is not true. Um, the CDC, DivorceRate.org uh, and eHarmony, along with <laughs> many other websites, uh, 
broke down the divorce rate as it's supposed to be broken down. <coughs> it uh, it, inc it increases the younger you are and the more times you are married. So the highest amount of divorce is from people from 20 to 24. They have um, a 38% chance of getting divorced. And then people who are married, they did it first, second, and third time married. Third time married, your um, divorce rate is 74%. So in conclusion, he was wrong for, for, um, for denying these people the right to marry just because they're mixed race. And also, if you can, I'm not suggesting that you go out and search for mixed race, but if you find one, then you could have a better life and a better uh, opportunities for your children. Thank you. So Avery, what did you think? Um, overall, I thought it was a, a good speech. It was a good speech to say, man. Uh, structure was very well structured. Um, got a lot of information out of it. So I'm thinking about, you know, maybe uh, that's my brother race. Which I think I found that person. Using the example is an interesting point. I, I mean, your argument shouldn't really be about that uh, particular bozo because you know that guy's. I don't know where he's been asleep for the last 30 years. You know, it's like he woke up one day and said, "Oh, I can make whatever rules I want." Uh, that's a little strange, but it's a, it is a recent example where there was some controversy about it. I like the idea of using that as a as a gateway to this particular subject about interracial relationships and marriage and that sort of thing. And I think that that's a, an interesting topic. I'm not sure that uh, some of your supporting points are as useful as they could be. I'm sitting here thinking, well, so if I want to experience the food of another culture, getting married is really uh, an important way of doing that. That seems to me to be kind of a silly sort of support there. That There might be a better understanding of uh, cultures and ethnicities because of interracial marriage. I think you could show that, for instance, by uh, maybe families that were affected by uh, having uh, a partner from another race introduced into the family. Did it change their attitudes about things? Did it uh, make it easier for them to get along? Did uh, they uh, you know, pursue other relationships or were their social relationships different as a consequence? I think you could find some illustrations that would support that a little bit more and I think that would probably be a stronger argument. Uh, the arguments about uh, some of the genetic issues are interesting. Um, your proof on it is a little thin. I mean, basically, we're drawing a couple of analogies. I, you, it's, you've got the one example about sickle cell, and I, I would like to believe what you're talking about is being is true, but I don't hear any source citations on that information. The same thing is true about the the Kenya um, data that you've got. This is one of those things there. There's probably some information that you read, but it's not being cited very well in the presentation, and I think you need to do a better job of that. All right, thank you. <laughs>